In episode two, the Pogues found a safe place to hunker down for the night. They tried to get to Key, but when they went to Carlos Singh's compound, it was just too fortified. They couldn't actually do anything. They would have gotten caught. They find an abandoned building, and they try to start formulating yet another plan, but they just don't know what to do. They don't know how to get in touch with Carlos. They don't know what he wants. Yeah, they figure that he wants money, but they also figure that this probably has something to do with the cross or the gold or both. While the Pogues are trying to find Key, Big John is trying to find John B. He and Limbry are on the island, but they have no idea where John is, and they know that they need to get to him before Carlos does. It's a Hail Mary, but John does have an idea. Church bells. He used to signal John B. when he was a child using a bell. So he and Limbry head up to the church. They pay off the priest, and it allows Big John to use the church bells to his heart's content. It actually does work. John B. does hear the church bell, and it does tip off the memory of when he was a kid, but it's been so long since he's actually seen his dad that he just feels like he's hearing things. He needs to get back on track. How are they going to get Key back? It's not all bad, though, because JJ completely forgot that he stole Jimmy's phone. They start looking through the phone, and they find the number to Carlos Singh. As the Pogues are arguing about what to text Singh, because they don't want to make this any worse for Kiara, Key has actually decided to talk to Singh and try to get out of this mess herself. She tells him that she doesn't have the diary on her, but she can get a copy. In order to do that, though, she has to go by herself. And Singh doesn't want to let her do that because that doesn't guarantee him that she'll ever come back. She tries to use Rafe as collateral, saying, you can keep him, but he just kind of chuckles at that. She reiterates that if he just lets her go, she can get in the diary, but he says, no, I didn't create this fortune by being a fool. Don't waste my time. This diary holds the key to the ultimate conquest. In the middle of this, he gets the texts from Jimmy's phone. He finds it very interesting that he's getting texts from Jimmy beyond the grave. Unfortunately for the Pokes, they have no idea that Jimmy's now dead. So while they spend a while trying to word this thing to not tip Singh off, the mere fact that he's even getting a text tips Singh off. The text they sent, though, says, I got these two, and it's a picture of Sarah and John B. Singh responds with, ah, great, where's your location? And as they're trying to figure out where the best location is to escape from, they get another text that says, never mind, I just tracked your location. Because JJ never turned off location services. The Pogues know it's only a matter of time before Singh's men are on them. They have to start formulating some kind of plan, so they decide to hide out and catch these people in a trap. Back at Singh's compound, Key is very concerned for her friends. She's also in a pickle because Rafe is the only person that she can really count on in this situation, and he's not trustworthy at all. He knows that. He knows that he's not trustworthy, and he doesn't even blame her for it. But he tells her, I'm all you've got. I also have a boat that can get us off this island, but first, we gotta get out of here. They then hear all of Singh's men leaving to go get the rest of the Pogues. And while it does suck for the Pogues, it's probably Key and Rafe's best shot of escaping. The two fake a fight, which forces the lone security guard who locked them in to have to open the door. Rafe then knocks them out, they tie the guy up, they steal his gun and his cell phone. Right before they do actually leave the house, Key emails herself a picture of a painting that Carlos Singh was telling the story of El Dorado in front of. He seemed to be focused on this one painting, so she finds it interesting and maybe she can use it later on. They then notice that there is a truck that is leaving the property, so... They run it down, hop in the back of it, and they're surprised because there's somebody else in the back of this hay truck. Rafe, however, jumps into action, knocking this guy out and literally throwing him over the moving vehicle. Key definitely didn't think that Rafe needed to go that far, but Rafe has anger issues. Once they're kind of in the clear, Rafe tells Key, I don't mind driving you and taking you to somewhere safe, but I'm not taking your friends. That ain't happening. He tells him what he wants to hear, that all she wants to do is get off the island, but she's not about to let the Pogues down. Once they actually get on Rafe's boat, Key gets Rafe in a compromising position, which allows her to kick him off the boat. And while he's in the water, she takes off. He is livid, but she just tells him, I'm sorry, I gotta help my friends. And her friends could absolutely use the help. The trap that they set for Carlos Singh's men worked. It was a little bit of a battle, but they were able to evade Carlos Singh's guys and get the hell out of there. 
While it buys them some time, they do know that Carlos is still going to be on to them, though. And they once again have no idea how they're going to save Kiara. At this point, they still think that Kiara is stuck at Carlos Singh's place. But Key uses the security officer's phone that she stole to text Jimmy's phone. She texts them a location, a time, and she ends it with P4L. That's the tip that it is coming from Key and not from Carlos. There's no way that Carlos Singh would know that P4L stands for Pogues for Life. They head to the location of the marina, they start looking for Key, and it doesn't take long for them to find her. Everybody gives Key a giant hug, and all they want to do is get the hell off that island. But one thing has really been bothering John B. is the fact that those church bells have gotten louder, and they're continuing, in the same fashion that his dad used when he was a kid. He can't shake the feeling. He feels like he's got a little bit of time to go investigate it, so he tells Sarah, I have to. I don't know what it is, but I got a feeling. So just sit tight. I'll be back in a little bit. Sarah thinks this is absolutely nuts, but she also knows that John B. will obsess over it if he doesn't get the answer. So she lets him go, but tells him, hurry. And that's a pretty smart move because guys have tipped off Carlos Singh that the Pogues are at the marina, and they're on their way. As they're waiting for John B. to take off, Key fills in Pope and JJ that Singh wanted Denmark's diary of all things. The thing that gets JJ really excited is the fact that it might lead to a bigger treasure. But the excitement quickly wanes as time passes by and John B. still isn't at the boat. And a little while later, Carlos's men arrive. They don't want to leave John B., but they're kind of forced to. There's a lot of infighting about whether to stay, whether to leave, but ultimately they have to take off without John B. vowing to come back and get him. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.